Hi there. I've always loved collecting things. I have a large collection of jugs. I have a large collection of many other things. And today I'm going to use three of these jugs to show you how you can make, uh, investigate painting for painting um, collections of objects which are similar in their, their structure but are different in their decorations. Um, these are the jugs that I'm using. And as you can see, they're all very different shapes. Um, and then if you move over here, you'll see some of the materials that I'm going to use. Quite, quite simple, keeping them, the colours um, down to oil pastels and uh, watercolours and acrylic ink. Okay, so I've thought of uh, many different ways to do this and I will show you some of those uh, investigations a bit later. Um, but I've landed on this long format, which I thought would be um, a bit unusual. Um, and I have used the three jugs that I showed you before, but they are repeated in different areas. So the first thing I've done is to draw very lightly across this paper. You perhaps can only just slightly see it. Um, and the next thing I'm going to do now is to use this um, acrylic ink pen. It's a Posca pen. And I'm going to start to draw. And I'm going to try to draw really freely so that I don't um, really take my pen off the paper uh, um, hardly at all so that I can get lots of shapes and lines so here we go so I'm gonna just, just keep on moving as much as I can so I get so I'm not worried about getting shapes that are crossing over that's absolutely fine and then I'm going from one uh, shape to another one jug to another I have um, I'm going on to the spotty jug which I especially like so here it goes Again, it's a very different shape. And I'm keeping on moving. I'm hardly taking off my pen from the paper. Keeping on moving, 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 and moving on now. So I'm coming back to my first jug. I'm gonna make that a little bit smaller this time though. So I'm literally just overlapping. Overlapping is making lots more shapes. Keeping my eye on the jugs, but keeping my eye on the picture even more. So I'm going to just put in here the leaf shape on the jug. So I'm looking at the decoration, the things that make these jugs themselves. And then moving on. And now I thought, well, I'll have a little go at this little, um, this, this, uh, I'll have a go at the, the spotty jug again. But I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and shorter. So again, I'm not too worried. I'm not looking for accuracy. I'm looking for line and shape. But all the time you're doing this, you're really thinking about what it is you're looking at. Keeping on looking, looking at the different qualities, the different decorations of the jug. And then the next one I'm going to use is this little funny little tree one. Nice big fat round one. So I'm putting on a big shape here looking at the tree shape on the actual jug. Again, looking at the character of the jug. Here we go, keeping on moving. And then finally, one more of the first jug, but this time I'm going to make it coming off the edge of the page. So again, a few more lines and things to show the quality and the character. Coming back to this one again, so I'm going to do the lines down here which are like the tulipy shapes and maybe a couple of these shapes. And there you go, we're ready to go. Okay, so the idea is that we're going to look at the shapes as they are on the paper. Um, the jugs are obviously there, but we've got lots of overlapping shapes and I can always add more shapes if I want to. And that will help to abstract this whole um, subject. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is look at the negative shapes. And I'm going to paint all around the negative shapes so that I can get some sense of, of placement and um, uh, looking at the, uh, at the things coming off the edge of the picture. So gradually, gonna, I've just chosen this blue, which I quite like. all around the negative shapes, the shapes between the shapes. Doing it all very loosely, because I want it to look nice and painterly. It doesn't have to be, we're not talking about drawing round things accurately necessarily. We just want 
We want this picture to become the important subject. The picture is what matters. So coming all around. As you put in the negative shapes, you, the jugs themselves start to sort of come out. They pop out of the paper, as it were. But I'm only going on shapes which have, which are appearing. I'm not looking and worrying about them being necessarily describing the jugs. The, the shapes are cut up themselves. One more little bit there. Try to think as freely as I can so that I can be sort of quite creative with it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put another colour on. Um, I'm going to use the orange because it's a nice complementary colour and I'm going to put it in bits on each jug. I'm going to use this orange on each jug so that they start to link up. The picture starts to link up one shape with the other. So it's, I'm just looking at shapes, broken up shapes that I've already got. If there's a line, I'm going to end at it. All the time I'm thinking of the whole picture itself, not just one little shape here or one little shape there. Still keeping with the orange so that I can really start to link up. They can have a sort of cohesion. You're, 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 you're treading the path through the picture. Okay. And then one more here, perhaps, a couple of the dots. I love the circles. If the shape ends, I pick my colour ends. Just checking. There we go. So I think the next thing I'm going to do is put a little bit of oil pastel on. Um, I'm going to use purple, which is a colour that I really like, and I'm going to just put oil pastel on in order that I can start to resist those with watercolour a bit later. So again, going from one shape to the other, not worrying about whether it has to describe every single edge, but it's describing the whole picture. back round here just moving around the picture so my eyes moving around as well it's the way to make your picture cohesive and struck and, and help to guide your viewers eye around the picture as well okay I think that's probably enough now I think I'll use a nice bright yellow that will resist nicely. It's going to be watercolour rather than acrylic because I think it will resist better and uh, you'll get a better effect of, with the oil pastel. So you can see it really stops. And I'm going to come back down over here a bit. Keep moving along again trying to keep your eye sometimes if I put this bright yellow over the orange it makes it even more vibrant so that looks like a, a fun thing to do keeping on moving with my color a little bit more of overlapping so resisting the water the acrylic the um, oil pastel doesn't have to only be with orange with yellow. I think we'll choose another colour in a minute. And I'm really just seeing them all as shapes rather than forms. We're flattening out the picture plane while still maintaining the, 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 the objects so we know what they are. Obviously you could carry on doing this so that you abstracted it even more and it got more and more abstract as you were going along. Maybe a bit of pink now, my favourite colour. It's lovely, isn't it? So still looking at all the shapes, still going from shape to shape. You could build up with oil pastel, you could build up with textures, all sorts of ways that you could develop this as well.
just moving on again, maybe overlapping some colour. So use the colour, this is really all about colour and shape, picking out shapes. Okay, I think now I might use a little bit of this lovely pale blue colour. I do love it, it's gone a bit dirty. Quite nice if, if the colours run in, that's okay. I quite like it when the colours run in a little bit. Look how lovely that was, the way it ran, it resisted the purple. It's gone a bit green, but I think I'm okay with that. Keeping on moving. It's got a really lively look about it, hasn't it? I'm, I'm really I'm loving these colours. A little bit more of this blue that's gone a bit green. And the dots, the circles. And then I'm just going to use an even, even more of the blue so it will unify a little bit with the... Um, <coughs> it will unify a little bit with the background colour so that we're, we're, we're sort of abstracting, we're sort of hiding it all amongst the background. Just darkening in some places so that it shines, that it pushes this, the lighter shapes forward. And I quite like that there are little bits of white here as well. So I think we're nearly finished. So finally, I'll just show you a couple of the uh, different ways that I've approached this. It, obviously you can use any shapes, but it's nice to have shapes which are linked like this in one way or the other. So this was in a different format, just it, I made little squares. You could also use your um, masking tape like we did before, dividing up your picture. I'll show you another example of that. So again, the same uh, idea, but in a different format. And then. What I did then, this is another one which I did with masking tape, as we've done before, and then took the masking tape off in between us. I've got all these little um, sections of the jugs, which may be pointing out the things that you're liking about them. It might turn out that what you like is the decoration of your, of your subject rather than the subject itself. That's entirely up So finally, um, I did yet another one and I uh, decided to cut it up into little shapes like this. I've just tacked them onto a piece of paper. Um, you could take these and uh, start to play around with them. You could stick one onto a piece of paper and extend the lines as we have done before. Um, you could start tracing the shapes um, and so that you so that you make yet a, a whole other picture um, and you could maybe repeat one of the shapes if you like them so um, there's plenty of things that you can do with this um, and uh, I look forward to seeing what it is you've done so great thanks very much